Hallelujah. I want to welcome you back in to the 11th hour today. This is an awesome 11th hour. It's already been awesome because God is delivering uh, and healing and, and all this. He's, he's already doing something today that's, that's absolutely amazing. Hallelujah. Would you listen to something in Joel 3? Verse 1, for behold, in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. They have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they may drink. Now, you know, you have to understand and think about the time that we live in right now. We live in the time, every time that, that the world and, and things get to a place they're in right now in the nations, there's always a valley of decision, and it's always concerning Israel. It's always concerning Israel. Israel is never left out, never. You know, it's amazing that a while back, I remember, I don't know, a couple years ago, I started saying that there was going to be a collision. There's going to be a collision in the earth, a collision. Uh, and I didn't know exactly what I was talking about, but why did we not think that collision would include Israel? Right now, you see the nations all pouring in around the land of Israel, right this moment. And people would think, well, this is a... This is a scary time. It would be if you didn't know the Lord. But the Lord also declares in prophetic utterances that when I begin something, I will also make an end. So when I went to Israel, if you'll notice that all the places the Lord sent us to, I was prophesying peace, but prophesying a war, but prophesying peace. And speaking out against Israel's enemies. And it was at peacetime. This was in May, I mean April and and so forth so we went in april i think it was and came back in may either way it went it was way before this happened and i remember when i was given prophetic words i couldn't figure out why i was saying these things why was i talking about peace and israel's enemies and them surrounding the nation and so forth i thought why this is a time of peace well, now we see why. And some of the words are absolutely so on and things like that. Well, there's a valley of decision. See, I'm going to try to say something here, and then we're going to read some more scripture out of Psalm 59. But I, I want you to see this. Israel is like the tithe of the nations. However you treat Israel is how your nation is judged. And during the millennial reign and so forth, it's that way. It's always that way. Israel is the scales on which all the nations are weighed. It's always that way. It's always been that way and it will be that way. You've heard me say many times, you can break a window in Jerusalem and it'll be on the world news by morning. Well, you see what's happening. The mightiest nations on the planet are pulling into the Mediterranean. They're, they're carrying floating armies with them. We're talking about thousands, 5,000 troops in, in, one, in a carrier and all the planes and all this stuff. And we've got two floating war machines over there and all the battleships pulling in. And the different ones from different nations all pulling up in the Mediterranean. Well, what you saw there on that last video was when I stretched my staff out and was talking to Israel's enemies and so forth. I was stretching it out over the Mediterranean. I could see it right out there. I was pointing at it and began to talk about those things. So Israel now, see, the men of the world try to become God, and they try to make themselves God, but they're not God. Some of them are just barely men. 
some of them practice and can't seem to quit practicing between a man and a woman. They're just barely men. Some people in high places, you would be, a, you'd be shocked and amazed, or maybe not, how much homosexual activity that goes on in their, in their circles. They're, not, they're just barely men. And they presume to judge the world. Well, nay, says the Lord. They'll not judge the world, for they're not the judge of the world. I am the judge of the world, says the Lord God. And I will judge according to my word. And I will judge according to what I've said, not according to what you've said. Say it and say it and say it all you want. But your voice gets more hoarse and more dim as the time goes by. You have no authority to bring about the end of the world, so shut up. For you will lose your voice before you do. I've said over and over, says the Lord to France, I'm not pleased with you. I'm not pleased with the government of France. You better get it right before what's in secret comes into the open. Fix it. Fix it. For you're called alongside to help Israel. So the Lord is looking at nations right now. And men tried to make the Ukraine the balancing scales of all the nations. They started a farce in Ukraine. All to bring down one person. And they keep trying to take out three battle axes that I have in the earth, says the Lord. But they keep coming back. They keep coming back. And now, the Ukraine was trying to be made to be the scales. However, you helped Ukraine determine on how your nation was judged by the world. But nay, says the Lord, Israel is the scale. And now you see the scale. Nations are being placed on the balance. They're being placed on the balance. The United States, England, the powers of the earth that are gathering into the Mediterranean. You are called to be David's mighty men right now. You are called to surround David and protect him. You who can kill 800 with a spear at one time. You who can kill 300 with a spear at one time. You who can take the sword and let it cleave to your hand and stand in the lentils and defend it against untold odds. You are David's mighty men. Make no mistake of what I'm talking about, says the Lord. David is Israel, and you are the mighty men. You are the 30 mighties that are around him. Do not blow this one. Do not blow this one and turn after your own agendas while you're in the Mediterranean. While you're around Israel, be the mighty men to David. Be the mighty men and stand while David runs through a troop and jumps over a wall. Be the protection. Hallelujah. Be a shield. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to look over at, at uh, let's see, where do I want to be? Psalm. I don't have it marked. Let's just go find it. Let's look at Psalm 59. Hallelujah. And I want us to see that, and I hope you're still glad you tuned in today. Nations upon nations are in spiritually in the valley of Jehoshaphat. They're in the valley of decision. The whole world has come to a decision point. And this decision should be made wisely. Be the mighty men to David. And God will bless you to the point you've never seen before. For the next eight years, you will have the blessing of the Lord on your land. And it will give you this one seed in time is a seed for eight years of blessing. How about that? Now, Psalm 59, speaking for Israel. Hallelujah. 
Deliver me from mine enemies, O, o my God. Defend me from them that rise up against me. How about this? Listen to David as they watched the house and saw sent and watched the house to kill him. He said, deliver me from mine enemies, O my God. Del defend me from them that rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity. Save me from bloody men. Could it apply more than now? For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me. Not for my transgression, nor for my sin, O Lord. They run and prepare themselves without my fault. Awake to help me, and behold, thou therefore, O, o Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, awake to visit all the heathen. Be not merciful to any wicked transgressors, Selah. Listen to this. They return at evening. They make a noise like a dog and go round about the city. Behold, they belch out with their mouth. Swords are in their lips, for who say they doth hear? But thou, O Lord, shalt laugh at them. Thou shalt have all the heathen in derision. Because of his strength will I wait upon thee, for my God is my defense. The enemies of Israel have come up around the city. They're all around the city. They're all around. They want Jerusalem. They're all around the city. They come in the evenings like dogs. They attack in the night. They come against the innocent. And they come up and they howl around the city like dogs in the street. But they always leave howling because they, their bellies never were filled. We're in the time of the howling dog. The God of my mercy shall prevent me. God shall let me see my desire upon mine enemies. Listen to this prayer, David. It said, slay them not, lest my people forget. Scatter them by thy power and bring them down, O Lord, our shield. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride. And for cursing and lying which they speak, consume them in wrath. Consume them that they may not be. And let them know that God ruleth in Jacob unto the ends of the earth. Selah. Did you hear that? God ruleth in Jacob unto the ends of the earth. All nations are judged by Israel. All of them. And at evening... Let them return and let them make a noise like a dog and go round about the city. Let them wander up and down for meat and grudge if they be not satisfied. They leave howling because they can't find their bellies are never filled. But I will sing of thy power. Yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning. For thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing, for God is my defense and the God of my mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's awesome, is it not? The other day I was, um, and then I'll close with this. I, the other day I was in a, I think it might have been Sunday here at Church International, I think, and I said it's the time of Nineveh. The nations are like Nineveh right now. And the Lord began to show me this in Nahum chapter 1 this morning. It said, the burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, the Elkishite. God is jealous and the Lord revengeth. The Lord, this is God in his system of harvest, revengeth and is furious. Hmm. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. The storms and the whirlwinds fight when God is on the scene. 
and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry and drieth up all the rivers. Bashan languisheth and Carmel and the flower of Lebanon languish. Isn't it amazing that all these places are in the scripture right now? I mean, in the world happening right now that we're talking about. Lebanon, so forth. The mountains quake at him. Keep that in your mind. The mountains quake at him. And the hills melt and the earth is burned at his presence. The hills melt. Mm. Lord God, I ask you to help in this matter. Lord, that the hills, you said, melt. Let it be contained, Lord. Let it not be at this moment. Lord God, let the hills, let this be another time. Show mercy, God. The hills melt, and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Lord, do you not see what's happening? They're trying to bring about World War III. They're trying to bring about nuclear fallouts. They're trying to bring this about. But they didn't expect it to get out of hand this quick. And now we're praying for the mercy. We're praying for mercy. He says, yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation? And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire. And the rocks are thrown down by him. People say, well, are you, are you prophesying that? I'm praying for mercy right now. People are in the valley of decision. Nations are in the decision-making mode. One wrong turn can turn things. So we're calling for restraint and we're calling for the nations around Israel to just simply be the mighty men of David to protect David and let David finish his war. Let David finish the battles at hand. You do not understand. Maybe some do. One wrong turn. Keep in mind that there is a leader from this nation going over there. And they've made a huge deal out of it. Go back and listen to the prophecies of Carmel. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. Lord, we call on you today to be the stronghold in the day of this trouble. And he knoweth them that trust in him. Netanyahu has asked, Lord, and said that God will fight for Israel. So, Lord God, I ask you to be their stronghold in this day of trouble. And let the warships of, of the U.S. and the warships of, of England and the warships and, and the planes and all the mighty men of war that have shown up in the Middle East, let them stand as sentinels to guard David and nothing more. Yes, Lord, I hear you. They didn't expect it to go this far, this quick. They're there out of fear. They're there trying to keep something from escalating. For the enemy, the enemy would try to bring about verses 4 and 5 before their time. Verse 8, but with an overrunning flood, remember that, 
He will make an utter end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemies. What do you imagine against the Lord? He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. So, Lord, if the hills are to melt and the earth be burned at your presence, let it be contained on your enemies and those that would come against you. Protect David. Protect Israel. For while they be folded together as thorns and while they are drunken as drunkards, they shall be devoured as stubble fully dry. There is one come out of thee that imagineth evil against the Lord, a wicked counselor. Now you need to really hear that. For there was a prophecy that I gave that told Israel that the enemy was not from without. That is the most dangerous thing. That's the enemy is actually from within. And it needs to be remembered. A wicked counselor. Thus saith the Lord, though they be quiet, and likewise many, yet thus shall they be cut down. When he shall pass through, though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. For now will I break his yoke from off thee, and will burst thy bonds in sunder. And the Lord hath given a commandment concerning thee, that no more of thy name be sown out of the house of thy gods, will I cut off the graven image and the molten image. I will make thy grave, for thou art vile. Behold, upon the mountains the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace. O Judah, keep thy solemn feast, perform thy vows, for the wicked shall no more pass through thee. He is utterly cut off. The enemies of Israel have brought about a war between their gods and the God of Jacob, the God of Israel. And so this is going to be decided decisively. Do not be afraid, for the Lord brought an end when he began it. It's already there. Notice he said, blessed are the feet of those who stand on the mountains and proclaim peace and good tidings. And the Lord had the, this ministry, at least I can speak for us. I, I know he has many, many prophets and many people in the earth right now. But as far as this ministry goes, we were on the mountains of Israel proclaiming peace. Proclaiming peace before this turbulence arose. So the Lord said it was coming, but he made a way through it. So today, I will, Lord, it's not only a word to Israel. But it's a word to you watching. The Lord said, today is your day of victory. Today is your day that the Lord will break through upon your enemies. Today is your day to put this affliction down in your life, and it will not arise the second time. This is the day of deliverance. Someone shout, it is the day of deliverance. It is the day of deliverance. Hallelujah! It is the day of deliverance. It is the day of deliverance. It is the day not only for Israel, but for you all around the world. God can come to your pocket of the world today and bring deliverance to your family, to your circles, to your homes, to your cities, to your states. Deliverance. Pay no more attention to the dogs who bark around the city at night. They come around your fortified place and they bark and they bark and they wag their tongues and they howl. They're only howling. These coyotes. I wish I had the message translation of that in front of me. It's the, the coyotes howl and go back to where they came because their bellies are not filled. They are not going to eat you. They're not going to destroy you and your family. This is a day of victory. We prophesied from Nahum. We prophesied from Nahum 1.9, this affliction will not arise. The second time. Hallelujah. People say, how can you laugh and how can you do this in the time of such great turmoil and war around the world? It's because I see what's coming. I can see what's coming. 
We saw what was coming months ago. Peace. It's coming. And on the heels of this peace. Now lines will be drawn and redrawn in the Mideast after this. But things have to shape up for a future event that's coming. But I'm telling you, when it settles down this time, revival will break out in the world to the point that nothing can stop it. Jackals will fall. Jackalous regimes will fall all over, and they'll become a thing of the past. And it will take a while for all of them to regroup and start again. Hallelujah. I want you to remember something about three men in the earth. And remember this, how God does things. A threefold cord is hard to break. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, that's all today on the 11th hour. I don't know what all we've said and how we've said it, but it is a day of victory for you. It's a day of total deliverance. Hallelujah. So come on, Krista, and let's, let's tell them how, you know, God is not bound to earthly banking systems. He's not bound to what, what jackalous regimes do with money and try to choke off things because you have to remember it's the love of money that's the root of all evil, yeah. not money, the love of it. Yeah. Abraham was rich. In silver, it says he was very rich, very rich in silver and in gold and flocks and herds. Man, he was in livestock. He was in cattle. He was in silver. He was in gold. He had investments that absolutely just people, even Pharaoh said, I want to talk to him. I want to talk to this man. Yeah. Well, that's a prophecy right there. Egypt is about to talk yeah. to Abraham. Yeah. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Well, you know, he, he said, I'm just going to sit right here in this chair today. <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> I'm just going to sit right here. This is comfortable and this is good. God wants you to be comfortable. Amen. <laughs> and this is a very anointed chair. He wants you to be comfortable in your finances. He does not want you to be hurting. He does not want you to be struggling. Why? Because he's not struggling. He's not uncomfortable in the wealth that he has. He's not uncomfortable with his life. He's not. And the scripture says that as he is, so are we in this world. He's not uncomfortable. He's actually very comfortable. Did you know what? the? But the one thing that I believe could, could make... God just go, not that he does that, but just in our terms, you know, what we would do. Thank God that we're not God, because we would just go. But seeing his people uncomfortable, and he's like, you know, I just saw a, a meme just a little while ago, and it was Jesus peeking around a tree, and he said, what are they doing with those almonds? And they said, they're getting milk out of the almonds. He said, I gave them like eight animals to get milk from. And it said, they don't like that milk. And he went. <laughs> it's like, I, I gave you all of this. No, I don't want that. I don't want that. That's not what I want. And it's like, yeah, trying to get milk out of a nut. That could preach in a lot of different ways. Trying to, trying to get things to sustain your life from a nut. Listening to a nut. That'll preach right there. You need to listen to this. Listen to somebody who's preaching the Word of God. And they call us nuts. And, you know... This, this is one of those things that makes you do like this. You do realize that there is a time coming in the Scripture where it, it actually says that people, they'll call good evil and they'll call evil good. 
it there there is a time coming where people will be so deceived i mean it says this read the back of the book and it's already starting to happen. People, they call us lunatics. They call us crazy because we're preaching the Bible. It's actually in the Bible. Well, you just say that, that God wants you prosperous and to be in health. You're preaching that prosperity message. It doesn't say anywhere in here that he came to put poverty on you. It, it doesn't say that. That's in the remix Bible. It, but in the scripture, it says that he became poor so that you might be rich. And that doesn't just mean he left heaven and came to earth as a man. That doesn't just mean that. What that means is when he died, when he was headed to the cross and they beat him, one stroke across his back in the message translation, it says in one stroke he became poor so that you might become rich. That's what that means. That means he, he absorbed poverty into himself so that you might become rich. But even when he did that, he didn't stay poor. He didn't, say, he didn't stay poor because he rose from the dead. He got up victorious, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And he said, all power in heaven and earth is given to me. So he defeated it all. So that you might, so that's like when, when he sees his people just living like they're peasants. And just living in poverty. It's like that meme. I literally gave them like eight animals to get milk from. Well, they don't want that. And he's like, I literally gave them every answer to live a comfortable life until I return. Yeah, but they don't want that. You know, thank God that I am not God because I would just be like, I've had enough of you. I have literally had enough of you. And that is why we're not God. But he doesn't do that. Every time you say, Lord, show me. Show me where in your word. He'll say, okay, go here. Every single time. This is why every Tuesday, every Sunday, he gives you another chance. Just another chance. And that's just, that's just on the air. The good news, the real, real good news is that he gives you a new chance every day. Every time the sun rises, you get another chance. Because he is on the throne every day. When the sun comes up, he's still there. When the sun goes down, he's still there. And every time in between, he's still there. And so, we have got to come to a point where we actually start believing and realizing that God put everything that we would ever need in this world to prosper. So quit calling prosperity preachers crazy. Would you rather tell, have, I mean, there are motivational seminars that cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars to go to to teach you how to get rich while they're getting paid while you came. But yet they call people who preach the offering who's actually teaching you the biblical principles, they call us crazy. You know, I don't see you paying hundreds of dollars to go and listen to somebody teach you how to be poor. But yet they are motivational. 
They're motivational. And we're, we're crazy to the world. So, but you know what? I'm not crazy. You know, I've, I've said this before. I've said, you know, I've, I've met people. I've actually met people that, the, that they have actually been stamped certified crazy. Like there are there are people who they have a they have a certified label to their name crazy, you know what they they're oppressed by the devil is what they are. Do you know I said to somebody one day I said I don't believe I've ever possessed one of those traits, but yet we have page after page after page that says that we're crazy. Comment after comment saying that we're crazy. Well, you know what? Get in this word right here. I want you to open this book, and I want you to go through it front to back. And I want you to see what the word defines as crazy and what the word defines as sane. And then decide who you want to start putting people in that category. There's a lot of people... A lot of people up north of Richmond who could fall under the crazy category. Start putting people in the, in the categories, but do it determined by this. And you know what it'll say? It'll tell you that those, those that, that, that vote to slaughter the unborn and innocent blood, those that are, are ordain uh, homosexuals in the pulpit, those that do this, those that do that, they go under the crazy category. There's a dividing line. See this right here? See this leather strap on this table right here? You're going to have to one day decide which side you're on. There is a line drawn and it's getting, it's being dug deeper and deeper and deeper until that line is going to become a trench. And you can't cross it one day. If you find yourself on that side of the line right now, jump on the other side before it's a trench and you can't cross back. It's, it's getting clearer every day. You're seeing, if this, ain't, if this ain't the real deal, then this is a major impression of the great falling away. Decide today which side you're on. As for me, I'm on the Lord's side. And you know what? His side contains the blessing. And the blessing of the Lord makes you rich and it adds no sorrow to it. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Well, you know what? I'm going to save the rest for, for maybe a preaching suit one day. I don't know. But today we're going to give. We're going to sow our seed according to the Word of God. This is not a script taken from a motivational speaker. This is a, 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 a piece taken from not only the greatest motivational speaker of all time, but the person who tells the absolute truth and whose words will be standing when everybody, else wor everybody else's words falls. His words will still be there. And this is what we quote over our giving. And I will never apologize for that, nor ever back up off of it. Luke 6, 38, it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Say, I believe it, I receive it, I call it done in Jesus' name.
Now, if you're a tither, Malachi 3.10 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts, and all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Say, I believe it, I receive it, I call it done in Jesus' name. Amen, so be it. Well, as Roxanne comes to, to give us some victory reports today, we want to announce something very, very special. Tonight, this is Tuesday, October 17th, 2023. Tonight, on this Tuesday night, we are having a corporate prayer live, which means our um, our international prayer um, <clears throat> ministers will be in here also. Our corporate prayer ministers will be in here also. All the youth prayer will we'll all come together tonight for a night of prayer for Israel. And so it will be live, either whether in person or or by live stream, whichever one you can get to at Church International, October 17th, that is tonight, 2023 at 7 p.m. Central Time. So if you can be here, be here. We're going to come together in a corporate time of prayer to pray for peace over the land of Israel. Our people, they are our people. And they are our family over there. They are the apple of God's eye. And we are going to be standing in agreement and prayer for them tonight. But if you can't be here in person, make sure you tune in with us because your prayers are also powerful and effective, as the Word says. And so we just want to invite you to come be with us. This is not something we do every Tuesday night, but uh, tonight the pastor has called for a special night of prayer, and so we wanted to invite you to come tonight. Amen. Amen. All right, Roxanne, tell us what we got going on and encourage us.